I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, so for today's video, I will be talking about the Wired article, uh, Brandon Sanderson is your God. Yes, that article, the currently circulating article in the adult fantasy community. If you don't know, well, two days ago, The Wired released an entire article about 4,000 or 5,000 words that took the author about five months to write, completely mocking Sanderson's. Like, completely. And I didn't actually plan to make this video. The entire article is a clickbait, it's a rage bait, and it succeeded. It definitely succeeded, considering the attention that it's getting right now. I mean, it won over me as well. I don't usually quote retweet or retweet an article like this, but yeah, this one got to me. So on that, well done. Well done. And that's exactly why I do not want more attention being given to this uh, utter garbage article. So if possible, there is no need for you to click on the article, but if you want context, I suggest checking out other booktubers video like uh, Daniel Green or Elliot Brooks. I think they did mention what the article stated in their videos, I think. But at the same time, I got quite a lot of DMs, quite a lot of messages asking me to create a video sharing my thoughts on this entire debauchery. So I might as well do it. And also I want to feel a bit uh, cathartic by sharing my thoughts with all of you. So here's the thing. I think many of you know that I'm a fan of Brandon Sanderson's books. I do not know Brandon Sanderson. I never talk with him. I do not know how he will act toward me. But based on what I've seen online, I think he will be a nice person. I have mentioned this in my review for Hero of Ages, uh, the third book in the Miss Bond trilogy. I have mentioned that Miss Bond trilogy is hugely responsible to why I became a fantasy reader, a reader of fantasy novels, because I always read manga, but I never found that spark with fantasy novels until I read Miss Bond trilogy. So obviously, I have a bit of a bias here with the series. And of course, I love the Stormlight Archive as well. But the majority of my love for Brandon Sanderson's books is definitely because of the books and the stories themselves and the characters. It pretty much has nothing to do with Brandon Sanderson as a person. And I want to make it clear that I am completely okay with people hating Brandon Sanderson's books. Completely okay. We all have different reading tastes. We all have different preference when it comes to reading. That has always been the case and it always will be. So I definitely have nothing against people disliking Brandon Sanderson's books. But this entire article, it just feels so pointless and, well, bullying. The author of the article contradicts himself all the time in this article and the entire writing just oozes with hatred, rage, and envy. It's kinda insane to see this being published by Wired. Though as I said earlier, if its point is actually only to get clicks, which it did, so again, well done on that. But I just want to share my thoughts a bit regarding some of the passages here. So the author, and I quote, maybe nobody writes about you, I say to Brandon Sanderson, in front of his wife, his number one supporter, because you don't write very well. Now, regarding the writing, I will talk about that soon, but come on, nobody writes about Sanderson? There are countless videos and articles by professional journalism or not about Sanderson. If anything, there are too many articles about Sanderson now. And now this author has certainly contributed to that. So yeah, that's the first contradiction. If you take a look at my channel, I have posted more than 200 videos. You don't see me posting a lot of Brandon Sanderson focus content. I probably have posted less than 10 videos in more than 200 videos. One of the main reason behind this is that, well, Sanderson is just so popular now and I know that talking about him will get me clicks, will get me more views, but I also don't feel like I contribute anything new. That's why it is more likely for me to talk about new releases that I enjoyed, including Brandon Sanderson's new release and underrated and self-published fantasy books because I think they still deserve so much more recognition. But back to the point, Sanderson is immensely popular. He is most likely the most popular adult fantasy authors right now without a TV show or movie adaptation. Yet, they are coming, but not yet. So this entire passage just doesn't make sense to me. Many people have mentioned that journalism is dead, and I think this article is kind of like an example why it is dead. I mean, you have to resort to this kind of thing to get clicks. That just shows how bad things are for you. Once again, as I said, if you want to analyze his writing, you want to say his writing is bad, why it is bad, that's up to you. And I think you probably know if you only do that, you won't get as many clicks. Some of Sanderson's haters said that we are too upfront and defending about this. What's wrong with critical analysis? Well, there's nothing wrong with critical analysis. The thing is, 
There is no critical analysis in this passage. In this entire article, there is almost none. Sure, there were sentences taken out of context, but come on, I can take a book, any book here, and I choose any random sentences, and they can be so bad. Without any context, without any development, they can be horrible. And that's the thing implemented here. The author also mentioned that he has read 17 books by Brandon Sanderson, but he also said all of Brandon Sanderson's main characters are overly nice, they are super heroic. Have you even read Kelsier? Have you even read Miss Bond? Vin, and especially Kelsier, they are not the most kind-hearted characters. They have done plenty of bad things. And then there is also Dalinar. Come on, his past, if you think that is super heroic, I, I, I need to question your moral dilemma now. <laughs> and other than critical analysis, this author just goes on and on and on about Sanderson's clothing, his family, how awful his family and clothing were. Uh, what, what, what does any of this have to do with his writing? There is no critical analysis here. How does Sanderson's kid putting salt on their ramen has anything to do with Sanderson's writing? None. And then the author also continued to mock so many fantasy readers. So pretty much the entire article just gives the vibe of being elitist and very, very snobbish. The entire article really felt like being looked down again, just like how it was back then in uh, about two decades or three decades ago as a fantasy reader, as a manga reader or gamers. And lastly, before I move on to Sanderson's response, I want to add that all of this, all of this articles are written after the author was invited to stay with Sanderson and his family. Like, come on, why man? Do not bite the hand that feeds you. This, this one is just devouring hands now. You stay at Sanderson's house and Sanderson and his family treat you with respect. They respect your job as proven in Sanderson's response, which is well, their home, their comfort place. And this is how you repay them. Once again, as I said, if you want to analyze his writing, call them bad critically, that is up to you, but not like this. As I said, what does his clothing, his food, his salt have anything to do with his writing? There is none. And why are you complaining about The Greatest Showman? The Greatest Showman and Hugh Jackman are great. Why are you complaining about them? The article mentioned that the author has always been reading fantasy books for I don't know how many years. And some of the biggest advantages of reading fantasy, from my perspective anyway, are escapism and also learning empathy. Reading fiction and fantasy books should teach you more about empathy. At the core of speculative fiction, I think these two are the best aspect of the genre. And apparently, empathy is completely lost in this entire article. Some of the replies regarding all this drama are really, really awful as well. Some have mentioned that, uh, sorry to say this, but Brandon Sanderson should die because he write popular books that a lot of people love. Like, what? What even is that? You don't even know the guy. Why should he die because people actually love his books. Why? And what even categorize as a bad writing now? I think many readers have different category for what makes a good writing. For me, I'm not too fussy about prose. Yes, if you are looking at writing from a literary aspect, Brandon Sanderson has acknowledged this as well. Brandon Sanderson's writing doesn't fit the bill. Trust of the Emerald Sea is a completely different kind of book compared to all of Brandon Sanderson's books. And I think if Sanderson actually want to try the literary prose, he might be able to succeed at that. Might, because I haven't seen it yet. And there is a fantasy author, who I will not name, that mentioned, it is okay for Sanderson to be treated like this because he is a millionaire now. What does being a millionaire has to do with being treated with respect? So if we become rich, we're allowed to be mocked now? It is okay for our family to be mocked because we are rich after all of our hard work? That is insane. Sanderson managed to reach his current state of success through hard work and luck. It is not only luck, hard work brings more luck to you. That's always the way I see it, without any grinding, without any hard work, it is difficult for luck to appear on your side. And it needs to be mentioned that Brandon Sanderson's writing provide income for workers. I mean, he is the boss at Dragonsteel, and I think there are so many employees at Dragonsteel now. And all of them has their income coming because of Brandon Sanderson's writing, and I think that is a great thing. Not to mention his family as well, of course, and us readers who has received unforgettable escapism and reading experience through his books, because books can save life, and I think it has certainly did for me. And after all of this craziness, after the author completely belittled Sanderson in every possible way, 
Samson still come up with a very respectful response on Reddit. And I think this is another reason why many people respect Sanderson. It's another re and this is again another reason why quite a lot of readers are upset over this article. And that entire response by Brandon Sanderson is just basically countering Brad with kindness. And I'm going to take some of the passages from the response here. I am not offended that the true me bores him. Honestly, I'm a guy who enjoys his job, loves his family, and is a little obsessive about his stories. There is no hidden trauma, no skeletons in the closet, just a guy trying to understand the world through story. That is kind of boring from an outsider's perspective. I can see how it is difficult to write an article about me for that reason. But at the same time, I'm worried about the way he treats our entire community. That's fantasy community, by the way. I understand that he didn't just talk about me, but about you, as has been happening to fantasy fans for years. The general attitude of anyone writing about us is that we should be ashamed for enjoying what we enjoy. In that, the tone feels like it was written during the 80s. Look at these silly nerds liking things. How dare they like things? Don't they know the thing they like is dumb? As a community, let's take a deep breath. It's alright, I appreciate you standing up for me, but please leave Jason alone. This might feel like an attack on us, on you, but it's not. Jason wrote what he felt he needed, and as a writer, he is my colleague. Please show him respect. He should not be attacked for sharing his feelings. If we attack people for doing so, we make the world a worse place, because fewer people will be willing to be their authentic selves. That said, let me say one thing. You, my friends, are not boring or lame. In Going Postal, one of my favorite novels, Sir Terry Pratchett has a character fascinated by collecting pins. Not pins like you might think. They aren't like Disney pins or character pins. They are pins like tags used to pin things to walls. Outsiders find it difficult to understand why he loves them so much, but he does. In the book, pins are a stand-in for collecting stamps, but also a commentary on the way we as human beings are constantly finding wonder in the world around us. That is part of what makes us special. The man who collects those pins, Stanley Howler, is special, in part because of his passion. And the more you get to know him or anyone, the more interesting you find him. This is a truism in life. People are interesting. Every one of them and being a writer is about finding out why. In that way, the ability to make Stanley interesting is part of what makes Pratchett a genius, in my opinion. That's writing, not merely using words. It's what I aspire to be able to do. People are wonderful, fascinating, brilliant balls of walking contradiction, passion, and beauty. I find it an exciting challenge to make them certain that the perspective of the washwoman or the monk sitting and reading a book is as interesting in the story as that of the king or the tech mogul. And I find value in you. Your passion for my work is a big part of why I write. You make my life special. Thank you. See what I mean? I think Brendan Sanderson on this entire drama is a much bigger man than many of us. I do not think I can be like him if I were put in his position, I will see red. But also, to me, good writing, from my perspective anyway, is not about how flowery the prose is, how beautiful you can describe a window or food, but it's more about emotions. It's more about inciting emotions when you're reading a book. It's immersing you in a book. It puts you in a different character completely. As I said, escapism. Sanderson has constantly mentioned that he is a storyteller, and I think he definitely succeeded at that. And this is not just for me. I mean, he is one of the most popular authors right now. And I think it is safe to say that we love his storytelling style. We feel emotions from reading his books. We can enjoy his accessible writing. It's capable for us to enjoy reading an epic fantasy with big scope through a writing that is so accessible. That is, to me, not a bad thing. Not gonna lie, I'm actually kinda tired seeing accessible writing being instantly categorized as inferior or poor writing. I simply do not agree that is the case because, as I said, we readers, all of us, have our different preference when it comes to reading books. So I guess at the end of the day, I will repeat Brandon Sanderson's message regarding all of this drama. I think I have shared my thoughts regarding the article, even though I didn't go into details on it. But at the end of the day, I just want to say, try to be kind, be gentle as much as possible. I know that the world is an unfair place. It is unfair. It has always been unfair and it always will be. Our society and civilization tend to reward cruelty and ruthlessness over kindness and integrity. It is unfortunate, but that is the case. And just as a few examples, as a content creator, I know how mean some comments can be. And yes, negativity attracts people 
more often than kindness, especially when it comes to creating content. You receive 1,000 good comments and then you receive one bad comment. It is very likely you will remember that one bad comment more often than the 1,000 good comments. This is the kind of thing we humans need to fix. And that's partly why I think it is so much more difficult to be strong through kindness and respect. People might even use that virtue, even your trusted ones, subconsciously or not. It is sad to say, but that has happened in our world too many times. But I think that's even more so why we have to be kind, understanding, and compassionate. Even if it's insanely hard to do it, we cannot counter violence with violence. It only will beget more violence. So yeah, my overall message regarding all of this, try to be kind. That's pretty much my thoughts regarding all this drama. Apparently, I have quite a lot of things to say. I thought this video would be brief, but starting next week, it will be back to my usual book content. I don't usually make this kind of video. I only make this video because I got so many messages asking me to do it. But I would like to hear your thoughts regarding all this drama. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me. 